Hi guys, I wanted to jump on here and kind of give you like direct examples of like how to um, engage and communicate with a narcissist and just share like my journey and where I'm at. So I broke the no contact and I've started talking to my husband again and I wanted to um, share a conversation that we had last night and then kind of go into like the psychology or the mentality of it all. So I asked my husband, I asked him, um, I told him I had a hair appointment, but I had just got my hair done. And I asked him what he thought of my hair because I was deciding whether or not I wanted to keep the appointment or cancel it. And so I was like, what do you think of my hair? Do I need, um, should I go in and get my hair more highlights or whatever? And he said, are you guys ready for this? He was like, oh, now you're just fishing for compliments. And it's so weird. It's like, um, I'm just asking you a question. Like, I was just looking for your opinion of what you thought. I wasn't trying to fish for compliments. But then another part of me is like, and if I want to get a compliment from my husband, like, who cares? There's nothing wrong with wanting your husband to appreciate you. And so it was just really interesting to me. But this is that entanglement. This is where a lot of people will want to defend that. Like, I'm not fishing for compliments. Instead of being like, who cares? Does that make sense? So, but I didn't. Oh, sorry. Dog is barking. Sorry about that, you guys. Okay, so here's the psychology, and this is what it comes down to with them. I know dog won't start barking. I might have to redo the video. Lexi! No more, come. Okay, so um, this is what it comes down to with them is like they, what was I gonna say? So I have a need, so we have needs, right? But they don't see like us as worthy as having our needs met because when they were younger, they weren't, their parents made them feel like they weren't worthy of having their needs met. And so they had to create this false sense of self to be accepted by their parents. Oh, now my daughter's here. Hey, I'm doing a video, okay, real quick. Okay, okay, I'm back again. Um, so, so here is how I handled it. I don't know if I handled it right or wrong, but I didn't get entangled in the conversation. I didn't defend myself. I took a step back and I rethought of stuff in my head of like knowing my self worth. And so I said pretty much not, I didn't say it out loud, but in my head, I try to think of what is my need. I, and was my intentions right? And I was like, you know, was, was I, was I looking for something that I shouldn't be? Or was my, you know, did I have double like standards or whatever of what I was trying to get at it? No. So this is what I was thinking is I had a need for clarity. That's all I was doing. And then when he attacked me and said that, which by the way is like rude and disrespectful, and it's in the what I would call, what Dr. Hagen calls the courtroom, when you're accusatory, he was accusing me of fishing for compliments. Um, and I have a need to be understood as well. And these, like I am worthy of having these needs met by someone. Whether it's him or not, like that's on him. That's where, that's that whole, you stay in your lane and then they need to stay in their lane is that you, and that's where your self-worth, that whole like your self-worth comes from too, is knowing that you are worthy of finding someone to meet your needs, whether it's a friendship, you know, in relationships, just in life in general is like, this is the whole concept of like a healthy versus a toxic relationship or healthy friends versus toxic friends is this whole concept and idea of surround yourself with people who understand that we all have needs, we're all the same inside, and that we are all worthy of having our needs met by our family, friends, husband, etc. And they, they don't believe that. And that's where you will see the root issues. So let's say, and you can call them out on it, and then that's where you have to learn though to stay in your lane, to cut them out of your life and to surround yourself with healthy people. This is exactly it, is if they choose to not want to have this kind of healthier life. So this is like, this, you know, the things you say is like, I, I have a need for love, would you like to help me feel loved? And they, they might just straight up say, like my husband straight up tells me you're unlovable. That's it, there you go. And then at least now like, 
We know the problem. That is a problem. That's a problem. You are my husband and you choose when you will and won't love me. And I cannot be in a healthy marriage with a guy who decides when I'm worthy of his love, when I'm not worthy of his love. That's not, that's not healthy. That's toxic. And that, you know, have a need for safety, same thing. And that's where, again, they're going to try to blame shift, right? They try to put it on you or, you know, well, well, I would love you if, if you, the second, like that, if comes in, you know, you need to do X, Y, and Z for my love. Again, like that's when it's like, no, now you're make now he's making excuses for what he is choosing to do. And that's not okay. So then once, see how like, you don't have to get entangled anymore. Do you see how that's what boundaries are all about? Is you are saying, you are strictly saying, I don't agree with you. This is not the kind of relationship I want to be in. I think that I am worthy of love 24 seven, even on my worst day. And that's fine. And that's totally okay if you don't think I am, but I'm not going to hang out with you because I'm not okay with the way you think. Um, yeah, so I tried to, I think I just dropped that. I think that in that car ride, I think I just said, no, I really just wanted your opinion about my hair and if I should keep the appointment or not keep the appointment. And, um, and he finally was like, yeah, no, I think your hair looks fine. And um, he's like, but you know, it is rude and disrespectful. They are so judgmental people too. It's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Gotta pick your battles, right? So anyway, so I tried to bring it up later that day. I said, hey, can I talk to you about something? Because it's this entitlement of him thinking it's like that he can just talk to me all where he wants. Like this whole accusing me of um, fishing for compliments. Oh my, like, ah, <laughs> I hate it, you guys. It's, it's rude. It's disrespectful. It's this entitlement of I can talk to you however I want. It's just it's so wrong. So anyway, so I brought that up later that night. I was like, I wanted to talk to you about this and I wanted to get behind why you feel like... Like you have a hard time giving me a compliment or you get upset if you feel like I'm trying to get a compliment from you or like what's going on in your head. And he just made a bunch of excuses for himself again. Oh, it's because if you're trying to get a compliment that it just shows how narcissistic you are. Have you guys heard about that? How they try to put tell you that you're everything that they are. You're selfish. You're so self-absorbed. Like it's just, it's just rude. It was rude. It was disrespectful. It wasn't going anywhere and that I just, I just said, I just told him that no, I really just wanted your opinion and that I really don't see anything wrong with, and even if I did want a compliment from you, I don't see anything wrong with getting compliments from my husband. That doesn't make me a narcissist or selfish or all these crazy things. So yeah, so that if you guys see like, and that's the whole point of what a shallow person is like, look at me, I'm just going on all kinds of tangents, but a shallow person, I like, we always hear, you know, names like shallow person, but we don't really, do you know what that means? Like maybe, I mean, maybe you do, but I don't, you know, like I've never really thought, thought about it, but it's when you place your worth on this world, on shallow stuff. Exactly. You know, like um, I really feel like he thinks I get my worth from whether or not my house is clean or not. I don't. My worth doesn't come from a clean or dirty house. My worth doesn't come from the type of car I drive. My worth comes from God. And so that's why I've said in other videos that a narcissist needs Jesus because they need to find out that their worth is not entangled in outside sources. And they're, you know, but that's how they were raised. It was like they had to act or do or be a certain way for their parents to love them. This, it wasn't like an unconditional love. They weren't, the parents didn't make them feel worthy just to be, you know, just because of who they are in God. And so that's what really those walls and those barriers and all those thoughts and how they go, you know, and then that's, that's how they treat others. Like all that stuff, that's what needs to be addressed. That's, those are the walls that need to be broken down if they want to. If they want to just say, nope, this is how I do life. This is how I treat people. And I decide whether you're worthy or not worthy of my love then say, okay, like then you got to walk away. You have to walk away because you are worthy of love 24 seven. That's where that self-respect and self-worth comes from. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. Don't argue it. 
don't, don't argue, go no contact. The second and my husband says I'm unlovable is the second I go no contact, I want him out completely of my life. I will not tolerate disrespect. I will not tolerate that abuse. It's just, it's toxic, it's abusive, and it's unhealthy. So just really recreate your life, put your blinders on, really know your worth in God, go out, treat people with the kind of love, the kind of respect that you want to be given, bring in people, have a lot of friends, really just recreate your life and surrounding yourself with a bunch of positive, healthy people. So that way, when they want to come in and tear you down, you just, nope, put your boundaries up, boundaries up, no drama, no chaos. Put that boundary, say, nope, this is intolerable behavior. I will not put up with this stuff. Sorry. You, and you can say, I agree that we are both worthy of love and respect. That's the kind of relationship I want to have. What about you? And if they say, nope, okay, there's no arguing, no contact, no contact, done. Okay. Just want to throw that out there. Oh, and also I, I sent him, I've had him blocked right forever. And I just unblocked him and I sent him that text that we are all worthy. We both are worthy. I, you know, love, respect, safety, security, and that this is the kind of relationship I want to have and that we're going to use the V communication to draw each other in instead of attacking and pushing each other away. And I asked him if that is what he agreed to, that that's, that's the foundation. We're not arguing. This is not up for negotiation. I should, maybe I should snap a picture of that text and like put it in the comments. So that way, if you guys want to send that to your narcissist or your um, toxic relationships. So that way, like it just kind of, it kind of just puts everyone on the same page, you know, to start with, like, this is the foundation. This is where we're going to start with. I don't know. All right. Wish me luck. I wish you guys luck. It's really hard putting up your boundaries, really hard fighting for your self-worth because they want to tear you down. They want, they want to make sure that you know, no, you're not worth it. And that's because that's how they feel inside about themselves. And so we've got to break those walls if we can, if they even want to, if they even want to change their perspective or change the way they think or the way they were raised. That's on them. You've got to just at least deal with the real issues, those root issues, and then let it go. Let them crash and burn or let them step up and say, okay, I'm going to try it differently. All right. Good luck. Bye.